are so back, baby. Back, baby. Did you miss us? Did you miss us? Nice. Thanks. I'm just yes ending. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Girls Unscripted. I'm Kate. I'm Carolyn. And Carolyn, why don't you tell us what you want to tell us? Guys, here's what's going on. I have a gig at the Hollywood Improv on Monday at huge 9.30. Venue. Huge venue, huge venue. It's in the lab room. And if... Say you, when it is again, because I spoke over you. Sorry. 9.30. And I was like, let's make this fun. So for fans, if any of you guys come after the show, I'll be hanging out because I have, you know, friends coming. Come up to me and say the word Pizza Hut. <laughs> <laughs> we chose Pizza Hut because James Kennedy had yet another pool party where they ate Pizza Hut. I don't know what chokehold Pizza Hut has over this freaking cast. And we also want to bury it into the ground that Pizza Hut, we could be yours. Pizza Hut, I would lose my goddamn mind if you sponsored me. I love your za. I'm a Domino's girl, but That's fuck, will that mess it up? I do love the new cookie no, thing you got going on. Because Pizza Hut will see then they're going to want to change your mind. That's true. <laughs> we could do a live taste testing, all the things. Anyways. Back, well, no, wait, back to your, so the, your, you have a show, show at the Monday. Hollywood Improv Hollywood on Improv. Monday. Hollywood Improv, 9.30 p.m. Come up to me afterwards, say Pizza Hut. You will get a very special surprise. I'm not going to say what it is, but come up to me. There are enough Pizza Huts to go around. So if you see someone else get to me, first just come right on up after we'll have a group photo and i'll kiss each other it'll be great where can they get tickets they can get tickets online and i should put them in my bio that's a great this is a last minute gig and i'll also put in my bio links to other shows in the future so if you're ever like man i want to see that crazy carolyn you'll know where to go find her and we'll post about it on the girls unscripted instagram as well exactly so you can't miss her you can't miss me so we just got back from coachella Coachella. I did not see one famous person except for when I looked in the mirror. <laughs> okay. But anyways, I was like on the lookout. Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the lookout though. I know Ariana Maddox was there again for weekend two. I did see that too. But I think I, I've kind of gathered that the big influencer famous person weekend is weekend one because this mm -hmm. was my first Coachella. This was not your first Coachella. This is my first Coachella in a very long time and I camped the first time. Yeah, that's actually insane. And so I did not do that this time. I recommend the latter yeah. unless you are like 21. I've heard the camping is an amazing experience. I just couldn't imagine having no separation at all. It's just one long string of events. Yeah, it's like you're, for 72 you hours. live at, the festival, which, yeah. You shit where you eat. Again, you know, and they say never to do it. Literally. But you did it, and you lived to tell the tale. <laughs> I lived to tell the tale. Speaking of shit. Oh. <laughs> we also might have walked in shit, and I was going to apologize. My shoes look like they're covered in shit, and I thought it was just mud because we ran across a mud puddle. We have a, a group text going now. If it, in fact, is shit or not. Carolyn, if you genuinely think that you stepped in shit, why did you wear those shoes and not like clean them first? Okay, because I have tendonitis. Okay, does that mean you can't <laughs> you can't run your shoes under some water? This is a, this is very embarrassing for me to admit. Oh yeah, no for sure. Well, it's like the cloth part of it. Get those things away from it's me. It's like the cloth part no, of it. No, I the only reason that I'm allowing this right now is because I know for a fact it wasn't shit. So basically, <laughs> if you saw videos from Coachella, there was like all right, let me tell you my story, how I found it out. So I went to the porta potties during Diplo, which, by the way, changed my life. God, I have never just uncontrollably danced. Broken. He was doing like a Hey Ya remix, and I just lost my mind. It was awesome. <laughs> but that's beside the point. I ran to the porta potties that were right next door, and it was like a swamp. So my initial mm. reaction was, Something happened with these porta potties. Yeah, that was mine. So then I went and investigated, and behind the fence, behind the porta potties, there was like a freaking geyser. <laughs> Looked like Yellowstone. It was like my mouth a few weeks ago. Oh, Carolyn, no. <laughs> no. So no, the mouth. I had to do it. I had to do it. I'm so sorry. Warn me going. next time. <laughs> geyser. No. And scene. Great callback. But it was like, like all this water. And it was just running through into the festival. But since it was behind the fence, behind the porta potties, I think people thought it was coming from the porta potties. But I saw it while it was still light out. I was sober. I weirdly didn't even have a sip of alcohol on Sunday of the festival. I was just really vibing. Like the music was getting me high. You know what I'm saying? So I was stone cold sober. 
the last day of Coachella and it was sick and I stayed up I still stayed up till like three in the morning so you know what it was sick. what I had Excedrin that morning that does it Excedrin everyone. has so much caffeine in it if does you it? don't I didn't know. know that no it does is that what helps headaches yes that makes fucking sense that's Kate? why it's the best Sorry, headache that was medicine. Aggressive, but no, that makes sense. Doesn't that click? That's why everyone's like, Excedrin's the best headache medicine. No, it's because Excedrin, I mean, it is, but it's because it has caffeine in it. I either as have to have a Diet Coke or Excedrin, but it can't be Advil if, ima- I, if I'm having that bad of a headache. Imagine what would happen to you oh if God. you had a Diet Coke and Excedrin. I would be through the roof. I'd be Ariana six shots deep. Six espresso six, shots. <laughs> six espresso shots deep on a normal Wednesday. Yeah, like when I go out, I famously don't do drugs. I'm like, what? It's like, so cool. it's my fun never have I ever that always gets everyone out because I've like, never I, ever. I've never done like cocaine or anything like that. I just, I've always been interested. I just never. I don't know. My anxiety is so goddamn bad. I just, I can I hear you on that. But. I feel like we do share that. Yes, we do. We both have very high anxiety. That's our big, you know, who doesn't though? (laughs) At this age, if you don't have anxiety, you're lying. At this year. But my friends uh, have partaken in Mm -hmm. recreational activities like that. And I was, I've always been so jealous that they can stay up like all night and mm-hmm. I couldn't. So I would take Excedrin at like 9 PM. Oh, you bad girl. I would, and I would stay, I was, it was the best night, some of the best nights of my life on you Excedrin. You naughty, naughty girl. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and you run with a fun crew too. And that's how I keep up. And that's also how not sponsored up. by Excedrin, <laughs> <laughs> but we'd be open to it. <laughs> I would consider it. I would open it. I would, I would open the email. crush up the Excedrin and sprinkle it on my Pizza Hut. So <laughs> that would be literally the best land. We'll of my combine life. whatever the fuck you want to combine. Co-sponsorships. We just have dollars in our eyes. It's so bad. It's pretty desperate. <laughs> um, so Carolyn, I don't know how much you want to say, but I do want to. <laughs> I already told her that she, I had to remind her that she said this to me at Coachella. <laughs> On Sunday, we were walking to the final act, which was John Summit, which by the way, we got there and immediately lost you. We were like yeah. all together and then you guys God. just floated away. You and yeah. your, she was with her husband, Kyle. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> when we had were- had a great time to he say had the a, least. Oh my God, he had a blast. We were walking to John Summit and you were like, Kate, did you hear? <laughs> and I'm like, what? And she goes, I spoke to God yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> And then she told me all about how she talked to God. It sounded awesome. What can I say? I just, it was, it was a religious experience. Yeah, Coachella the is. The music, the middle of the desert. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yep. Need I say more? Maybe that's all we need to say. It was wild. It was, it was a lot of fun. I will say I didn't tell you this yet, huh? but I just thought of it. So there was one point, I think it was when we were like sitting at Doja Cat and you and Kyle, or we were, I, I think it was that. You and Kyle were just like sitting next to each other and like just talking and giggling. And you guys are just really cute together. That's so sweet. I was like watching you, just like admiring you. You guys, Thank you. you guys just all weekend just just felt like besties. We are besties. Like you were just bopping around places, like dancing, singing, hugging. It was you guys. Yeah. It, that was couple goals. And we didn't get to see each other a whole lot this weekend. No, way less than I wanted. You guys to. were definitely. Well, you guys were with God. Well, and I was <laughs> so. I wasn't invited to that I, party. I was in a literal different dimension <laughs> you didn't have access to where i was i wasn't i wasn't with god I, I was in the vip access yeah a very special <laughs> vip we would get lost from the group and then couldn't find anybody so it would just be me and him together forever yeah, for yeah. like the whole day which to me felt like five thousand days because oh, the concept of time did not exist god it was the longest days of my life and just literally they were very long my feet were were oh, my my dogs were barking the dogs were barking another highlight of coachella <laughs> when i was with carolyn before she met the man upstairs was we <laughs> we went and we saw chapel roan together mm. and it was only me you kyle and one other girl like the yeah. group did not care about seeing chapel roan and while we were watching carolyn had like this epiphany and she was like wait a second wait a second is this the girl that sings the song about tennessee and west hollywood (laughs) or tennessee and santa monica or whatever and i was like yeah pink pony club 
she freaked out. She was like, this is my anthem. <laughs> because the lyrics are like, I'm leaving Tennessee. I'm going to Santa Monica. Yeah, like, like I miss you. I love you. But this is where I'm supposed to be. And she pretty much cried. And I, she has a picture of me literally in the, like, the sobbing sad face yeah. emoji. It was beautiful. I was I, glad I was there for it. It was so cute. And I... I love Chapel Roan now. Kyle's favorite this weekend. Chapel, Chapel Roan was a standout. Chapel Roan was a standout. Yeah. Diplo Who was, was your favorite? Diplo? Diplo was, okay, so Diplo was where I had the most fun, but that's like to be expected because he just plays that's like Diplo. bops, you know? Yeah, yeah. Chapel Hell Roan. Yeah. Oh, and we were together for this one. Kid Cudi. <laughs> well, for the short amount we, no, of time yeah, that Kid Cudi We were at there. Kid Cudi. Kid Cudi wasn't at Kid Cudi. <laughs> Kid but Cudi we were at Kid Cudi. Appearance. Kid Cudi comes out. Hey, it was hilarious because he was basically saying, I know you guys won't like these songs because you won't know them, but stay tuned because you'll have music that I like. No, I actually appreciated that. He like <laughs> gave us a so timeline. honest. He was like, all right, we have one and a half songs left <laughs> and then we'll rage, which I understood him being like, look, my hits are from like 2013 yeah let me play some new music and then for like the last 10 minutes i'll just like throw the fucking classics which he started to and we got uh we just started getting into it which ones were they so the only songs he played that i knew was it's like the last two well he played one in the middle which was i'll be up up in a way i love up, that up, one in, so he did play that one in the middle okay so i knew three then he played which i forgot this was him memories by david that Guetta. was the big one i was mm. let me sing it for everyone all the crazy shit i did tonight those will be the best memories, memories. oh that song fucks i like freaked out when i heard that i forgot it was him yeah then he played pursuit of happiness but like the fun project x remix then boom gone they're gone but i thought <laughs> the pursuit of happiness was the final song i did too so i and thought he, it was over he made such a big deal leading up to it that i just assumed like oh he wasn't kidding he was like we have we have a certain amount of time to rage and then i'm out of here right like there was no like thanks everybody yeah, no there was no thanks for all the next thing we knew it was lights up it was time to go the next place we were kind of like i guess he didn't want to play day and night because that's like a huge <laughs> song but I don't know. I was like, he's going to end on Pursuit of Happiness. I forgot Day and Night has like a, has like a remix that's like all over TikTok. Do you, where, do you know what I'm talking about? Will you sing it for me, Where please? it's like, at, at, at night. Bow, bow, bow. Is that a recent one? I'll send it to you. <laughs> I'll just send it no, to no, you. No, 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 no. Please try. I've done the best I can. Please, please but yeah, so basically what happened is during Memories, he like jumped off the stage, I guess, to like dance in the crowd. He was really like reliving his youth which was pretty cute i think he was like he was smiling from ear to ear the whole time like i felt like i was watching my son perform it was on stage. so cute i was like so proud of him although when he does step down so then later we see the video of like oh shit he broke his foot and that's why they had to stop which i will say this will date me but when i was at coachella last time it was florence in the machine she Ooh. broke her foot while performing kept on going well because she's a woman and we can endure more pain than that him. is so true but watching the video of kid cuddy he's like wobbling it wasn't a good look <laughs> it's such a cute little like whoa, whoa, and then it was kind of an embarrassing just fall it was yeah, kind of an embarrassing fall it wasn't fall. graceful but yeah sexy. i thought that was I, coachella no notes i would go again because i'm not a big festy gal as we've learned from just me saying i've never done a drug <laughs> but i would go again if it was a good lineup for sure i i really enjoyed yeah. it i i've come home from weekends in like vegas where i've been more tired i would also go back if it were like the right circumstances and the right lineup hey i didn't think this lineup was good i was just like hey i'm not gonna be young forever i might as well go while i can still fucking send it though even for and it we not, did if it not being the best lineup it honestly surpassed my expectations. We had somewhere to be at all times. And there were multiple times where we were torn into which way to go. Which is yeah. hence why you lose everybody. Yeah. And when, <laughs> and it's so hard to find people once you lose them there. Right. <clears throat> um, one thing I want to say other than Coachella, just for a quick gabity, just to close the loop oh my on God. my car situation. Oh my God. So I think when we, I last left you guys, they found drugs in my car. <laughs> Did I talk about that on here? You did. Okay. But they, will you give a preface that they weren't her drugs? They weren't, obviously, they weren't my drugs. They were <laughs> that would have been the perfect opportunity for me to try. What? I was crawling all in that backseat. I probably did them. My car got totaled and I got a check 
for some money and I used that check. More money than I thought I would get. Like $9,000. My car was shitty though. Used that check to get a new car and I got the same exact car as Carolyn. You guessed it. <laughs> our periods aren't synced yet, but <laughs> our cars are. They're super cute. One's silver, one's black. I wanted a black one. So yeah, honestly, I, I, I wasn't really fucked. It's, it's a Nissan Rogue. I wasn't really. F- Again, could be you, Nissan. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. We use a lot There's of brands. There's so many sponsorship opportunities. Just, life is filled with them, believe it or not. But yeah, I don't know. I love it. And now I have a new car. I have an SUV and I feel really high up off the ground. It's cool. And that's all I want to say. Hot up, up and away. I'm up, up, up and away. Up, up and away. <laughs> thank you for joining me on this journey. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for joining me on my journey. Kate. I didn't. Your, well, your mouth you were journey. There in spirit. No, no, oh, no. Oh, the journey with God. My journey. My journey. Your journey. My fun, fun weekend. Speaking of fun, fun, is this supposed to be our segue into what we're actually here to talk I about? I think so. It was a big crossover two hours between the valley being on Vanderpump and then Vanderpump being on the valley, and they bled into each other. I'm at this point. I'm kind of like, let's just like get rid of the ins. What's the word like inconsequential? Is that a word? Inconsequential is In, a word. What's a word where it's people that don't matter? In, in, insignificant? I think maybe you're know, thinking but, of inconsequential. Okay, okay. I'm going to restart. Let's get yeah. rid of the people that don't matter. Yeah. And just make one giant show at this point. I was saying the same thing. Like, why Why are we doing this? I feel like, Bravo, we've gone backwards in development. It was like, great, we have this strategy. We have these two shows. And now right. it's like, well, maybe he should be on that right. show. We are, ma- on that show. we are making the valley because Jax and Brittany are no longer on Vanderpump Rules. But we're also going to put Jax and Brittany on Vanderpump Rules. And then we're going to put Sheena on the valley. And Tom Schwartz. And Tom, and yes. Lala. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. My theory is that I think they're going to all just be on the Valley. I've said this before, but yeah. I think that's maybe what they're trying to get us accustomed to. Of like, look, it's not a really different show. It's the same like, show. Like, maybe we won't even notice. Maybe we won't even notice. Maybe we won't even notice. I mean, Kristen stole the mess, but this isn't the Valley. No, this is the Vanderpump. This the Valley the episode will be after this. We'll be after this one. So, obviously, in the beginning of Vanderpump, we do, like, the little, like, we're seeing Katie do this, James do this. I had one note for that little bit is that Mm -hmm. we do see a ariana and dan hard launch over facetime oh yeah was that the hard launch i feel like i've seen him i don't think he's been on vanderpump yet i think that was the first time we've heard his voice i could be wrong oh maybe i could be wrong maybe just because i've done so much stalking i feel like i know him he's a part of us now right right i actually used to do what ariana did because i you guys all have heard about my ex-boyfriend by this point. I lived with him for like an extra three months after we broke up because he wouldn't move out. And I had started like seeing actually my current boyfriend like towards the end of that. And I used to like hide out on my balcony and FaceTime Dan. So you wouldn't like, hurt his feeling? No, not that. I just oh. didn't want him to like hear. Yeah, it's, it's weird regardless. I don't really care about hurting his feelings. He wasn't very nice to me. Yeah. But I just like, I don't need him to hear. It's just awkward. I just didn't need him to hear like my whole FaceTime conversation. So yeah, I'm with you, Ariana, on that. I didn't love when he was like, is that what you want? There oh, is some yeah. microcosm of, what's his name? Tom. Tom, the boyfriend. Oh, Dan, Dan. Of Dan that I think a little icky and I, d- I can't put my finger on it yet hey hold on to that because you may be proven right in the future but i hope i'm wrong i hope you're I want wrong the too best for ariana. Right, yeah so our first real scene is in james and Allie's when Jax comes over and he is introduced as Jax ex- former <laughs> or exer yeah, employee <laughs> or whatever in what alternative universe is Jax taylor going to james kennedy's house to complain about Katie Maloney. Everything's fucked up. It's all so bizarre and so weird. And then also in the same alternative universe, James is sticking up for Katie Maloney because him and Katie are little fucking besties at this point. Yeah, yeah. I love that. So then after James's house, we go to Sheena's house where we've got our first Valley Vanderpump crossover and Sheena is talking to Brittany. And I, I think it was interesting how she, in her Talking Head interview, is explaining to us how she knows Brittany. She's like, yeah, I've known Brittany for a couple of years now. I've actually known her one day longer than Jax has known her. It's like, do the producers think we have amnesia? Yeah. We know who Brittany is. Right. That's weird. Do any of you not know who Brittany is? We all know who Brittany is. We know who Brittany is. No, that's not it. Jax. That's good. It Was it? Yeah. Okay. 
We but know who Brittany is. And then basically just in this scene is when Sheena's talking about how she, um, Scandival made her now nervous and has thoughts about could Brock do that with Lala? And like, could my friend betray me? You like did that? that. Yeah. You did that. I get it. I get it. I think, look, I think the producers are saying, hey, Lala, I g- you want to... <laughs> Get with Brock, maybe big, bigger, bigger storyline for you. We'll maybe throw in a couple extra dollars. That's for you. so true. Lala's really doing anything to get that bag and to get on LVP's good side and the producer's good side. No, I don't think she'd actually hook up with Brock. I she don't, is I, earning that coin. Talk about sponsorship. Amazon Live. We mentioned this last week. Mm. Did you see someone commented of like, you guys are, you guys are acting as if you wouldn't do it yourselves go on Amazon Live. oh yeah someone said that on TikTok I responded being like I would take a swag bag and do it I would without do, payment I would do anything on Amazon yeah I would I'm literally paying do Amazon every single month already <laughs> yeah. I'm giving In them fact, my I'm, money I'm sponsoring Amazon Live we You're are welcome our prime dollars are going towards Lala's Amazon Live she's doing great but yeah, obviously, if Amazon lies, it is up. We're just saying, I do I think I would reveal the gender of my baby on Amazon Live? I really don't think so. But, Unless it was that much. It must have been that much money. But I guess if you've already told everybody else. That's true. Why not? Yeah, who the fuck? Payday. She's supporting her family. But yeah, I at the same time, if Kyle, if I were in this situation, I'm not on a reality TV show and I'm not famous. But if I were in this situation, I don't think I would ever suspect Kyle of like, doing this I think it's kind of far-fetched for her to still be this upset at the thought of maybe Brock will cheat on her one day or maybe he did cheat on her one day because she was so blindsided with the Raquel situation there is a piece of me that does think that she is just using this as a way to be like but it, this is how it affected me. Yeah, no, totally. But I will say when someone really close to you can lie to you so easily it does kind of make your trust flags go up. Here's my thing, though. It wasn't so easily. She had her location. She knew that it, stuff wasn't adding up. You know up. what? You're right. And she does claim that she was suspicious. That she, she says that she was suspicious for a while. And so for her to be like, it was absolutely blindly out of nowhere. I think it's just a little. It's a little much. Yeah. It's a 10. We could take it to a 7. During this scene, Barack, and I'm pretty sure I'm right about this, has his first ever solo scene that's like not with someone from Vanderpump Rules when he goes to the coffee shop with his friend, his other like New Zealand friend. And they're just kind of like talking and he's being vulnerable about being jobless. But that moment I was like, all right, Brock is a main cast member. Like he's doing his own scenes now. You know what? So I was looking up for this week's ASMR and I saw a schedule of like, when castmates were main cast and supporting cast and recurring or whatever, Brock was technically a main cast member back in season nine, apparently. Oh, that makes sense. And then he, yeah, and then everyone hated him. And then he must have been. I didn't know you could be a main, because I see that on like Wikipedia. It'll yeah, like it tell says you that on Wikipedia, yeah. and who knows how true that is, but like. Interesting. I'm not surprised. He was a huge, huge part of season nine. Then he cut his hair, and we're like, yes, Different daddy. person, different person. Different person. I think my favorite scene of this whole episode was Tom and Katie together at that diner. That was real. Mel's diner, that's where Kyle and I go. Well, they went to the Hollywood one. We go to the one in Santa Monica. Yeah. Like, I think there's uh, one in West Hollywood, too. I think it's Yeah, like there's a, a lot. There's a lot. Yeah. It's so good. They got the Lana Del Rey shake. Like, it's just so good. Damn, okay. Mel's Diner, yeah. also not a sponsor. Also, fuck. But God, we're going to make a list. <laughs> the Jesus. amount of companies we keep naming. I don't know. I truly think that Tom and Katie were just meant to be friends all along. Like, yeah. watching them at this diner scene made me realize, like, like, now they make sense to me yeah the whole time they've been together I'm like I don't understand these two but like typically I would say it's impossible to be friends with your ex and typically I would say maybe you shouldn't be friends with your ex but in this case it's very different I want them to be friends forever yeah I think that's what's healthy and what works for them. They have that special bond. They I do. I mean, they got married for a reason. They also got divorced for a reason. I, that, I think that relationships evolve. Yeah. I do think there was like some like sexual tension between the two of them. Okay. Did he mention the threesome in this? Or not threesome. Oh my God. Being with Tori. Yeah. <laughs> or yes. Or one night stand. Did he no. mention? Is that a preview? It's a preview for next episode. Okay. So husband Kyle is like every, he thinks this is going to happen. He is so confident I'm like, I don't think it's going to happen, actually. But every time it's mentioned, it is one more fist pump 
from Kyle being like, yeah. I think that Tom <laughs> Schwartz wants what he can't have and Katie likes the attention. But I could see it. Yeah. I, I don't think I could. Would Katie do it one night? I think they're on good terms. And she, I think they had, when they didn't have sex, a good sex life because – it's been confirmed by Joe on her live stream. Did you see that video where she was like, oh. Schwartz is good at sex. I don't know why Katie didn't lick his dick. And it was weird, but like sucking him off. It was really it weird. It was, yeah. But X-rated. So Tom is good at sex. Katie is supposedly a freak. They like mentioned that in a lot of Vanderpump reunions. So yeah. maybe like one last hurrah. Yeah. But oh, that never ends well. Don't do it, Katie. Yeah. I I mean, I think. I mean, do it for the plot. Do it for <laughs> ratings. But don't. Oh, don't do it for your well-being. <laughs> so Sheena and Brock go on a date. Oh, their anniversary. Their anniversary date. I love how Sheena makes this prenup joke where she's like, well, we do have a prenup. If, if, if anything goes south, we're fine. Ha 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 I mean, like, I don't even know where it is, though. Like, ha, ha, I just, like, I feel like she realized what she was saying. Yeah. And then needed to, like, soften it up a little bit. But yeah. she should fucking have a prenup. Yeah, she should. And it doesn't matter if she doesn't know where it is. It still exists legally. That just made like, no sense. Just like Tom Schwartz <laughs> losing the marriage license. Like, you're still legally married. A prenup, yeah, isn't like... <laughs> Like it's not 1915. If if you have a print up or a legal document, it, it is um in the ether somewhere. Right. You can easily retrieve it. I, I did think it was refreshing seeing a nice scene between the two of them. There was one big topic of conversation though at this dinner that I do kind of want to get your opinion on. And it's, you know, they're crying about Brock and how this could be his second chance of being a dad. And at first I was like, okay. But then when I really thought about it, I'm like, is that okay to say? Like, if his kids may inevitably watch this someday, and I feel like that would be such a punch in the face. Like, what about the first chance? Like, yeah. I'm still here, Dad. I wasn't upset ab about, like, thinking about the kids watching it at some point. I was upset for Brock because I don't think they should be compared. No. At all. I don't think it's fair to compare children, like, in any capacity, especially when, well, no, you're right. Especially for the kids, with such a tumultuous past and probably really traumatic for them and super traumatic for him. If, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the therapist says to do here because that's a that's a weird one in the handbook. Well, you know what a therapist probably wouldn't say to do? To say that. Or when you already have a kid named Winter... Do you know this? One of his kids is named Winter. One of his kids is named Winter. And then Summer was born. They named her Summer. Wait for it. They have the same exact birthday. So he has two kids named Winter and Summer, and they are born on the same exact day. That's crazy. It's crazy. That is crazy. Someone on TikTok, and I don't know if this is true, so this is not like fact, but someone on TikTok said, you know, there's Summer Moon, mm -hmm. and they said that the other kid's name is Winter Sky. There's no way. But Summer and Winter, I mean, I would say there's no way. So any nothing fucking surprises me at this point. And the same exact birthday. Yeah, and his ex-baby mama's name is Lena. Lena and Sheena. Weird. I, mean, I just made that up. Oh, did you? Yeah, oh, man. I was like, I'm so glad I didn't know this at Coachella. Got him. Like, it was another timeline. <laughs> they <laughs> swapped timelines. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> no, her name's not Lena. I mean, it no. could be. I don't know. Here's what I didn't like about it. Sheena saying, well, sometimes I feel like we're just not enough for you. It'd be so fucked up if a guy said that to a wife who wants to work. What mm. makes it okay for her to say that to a dude who wants to work? Like, isn't that backwards kind of feminism? Yeah, I could see that. I mean, just, but like, like I'm asking, like, why would it be okay? But men do say that to women who don't want to work when they just want to be the breadwinners. I am kind of here for like the Sheena breadwinner, Brock be a stay-at-home dad. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, let Brock be a stay-at-home dad. But he doesn't want to be a stay-at-home dad. He doesn't want to be. So just like wives that don't want to just be stay-at-home moms, if the husband were like, well, are we not enough for you, honey? Uh, Why don't you stay in the kitchen? I see what you're saying. We're not I enough. See. Why don't you be a dad this time around? I'd be like, okay. Yeah, I feel like, you. I, it rubbed me the wrong way. I feel you. I feel you. Now, we're at your favorite part. Oh, my God. Are we at Tad Logic? Yes. Yeah, so Tom and Tom get in their little fucking Hot Wheels car. Holy shit. And my, my first note was Tom and Tom in the car. Grow up. That was so crazy. Grow up. <laughs> if so this crazy. was like, like, look, the fucking motorcycle sidecar, that was cute. Mm -hmm. But that was back when we liked you. 
We don't like you anymore. Grow up. It's just, it's really on the nose for a midlife crisis. Yeah. I mean, yeah, whatever. More power. It's better than the fucking golf cart Jax has been driving around in Valley. We'll We'll talk about that in the Valley episode. It was like the most badass drive with the most badass entrance. They're going to the tattoo shop. Them hopping out. They hop out of the car and then they walk into the tattoo shop and George is like, yeah, I'd like to get a tattoo of my dogs. Of Butters? Of Gordo and Butters. How do you feel about dog tattoos? I'm a, it's a no for me, but knowing, I think people can get whatever the fuck they want tattooed on them. I don't really care either way. Fair. He loves Gordo and Butters. I think the placement was nice. Yeah. And the tattoo looked really good. So yeah. More it power is nice to, to know that he can like love something selflessly enough to keep them alive. So he has a tattoo on his body of the four things he loves the most. I Gordo and Butters, Bubba, uh-huh. and Lisa Vanderpump. He got LVP tattooed on his abs. Oh, well, Gordo and Butters are Gordo two and Butters. Oh, gotcha. I was like, oh, shit. Where's this nipple tat? And Tom falls off the chair. Tom falls off the chair. Tom mentions them possibly being roommates in the house. That is a bullshit storyline to me, but sorry. Go on. Which, which I haven't thought about that. I, I think Tom's unhinged enough that he would suggest that. Because he's desperate. He's Because he clearly doesn't handle his money well. And he's like grasping at straws of ways that this no, could actually work. It makes perfect sense for Sandoval to want that. Right, right, right. Why would Schwartz, by Schwartz moving in there, he's literally just helping Sandoval pay his mortgage. Just pay a very large mortgage that he shouldn't have had in the first place. It's stupid. I don't think Tom's ever, like, Tom Schwartz was ever actually considering I that. also think he thinks that Tom is probably one of the only ones that's enough of a pushover that might actually consider right. it. I also think Schwartz is smart enough, though, to know that he could not live with Sandoval. Like, we've seen Schwartz's apartment. It's fairly clean. It like, wasn't for a while. Schwartz? Yeah. Why? Because he had all the plants. And stuff. I guess no, it well, was kind of When he was moving into it, it was like, I promise I'm, move, I'm still moving in. I just feel like anyone knows that Sandoval is, like, gross. And Schwartz is smart enough to know I'm not going to move in with him. He's gross. I don't know. The, he just gets grosser and grosser. Did you listen to Rachel Go Ro- Goes Ro? I listened to, like, two episodes ago. I just had to stop listening to it because... It's is all it, the same at this point. Okay, actually, yes. It's, it, it's, she's talking about the same thing every episode, and it's also been a tough listen because she's like, yeah, I'm watching back Vanderpump, and it's making me really mentally unwell. I'm like, then stop listening to it. And then I also feel like I'm almost enabling you by listening to yeah. your podcast. <laughs> I'm giving your sponsor something to do. Yeah. But the things that she says, I mean, just how manipulative he is just sucks. Not to give her like... 100% credence to everything that she's saying. I don't know if I use that word correctly. The superfluous line has me all messed up I don't now know what if anything I'm using means. words correctly. I did know superfluous. I, I, okay, flex. Um, and I'm smart as fuck, and I'm, I'm really intelligent. <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. I'm sorry, what? Where I'm were so we? smart. What were we saying? <laughs> <laughs> but no, actually, what were we saying? We were just going on a rant about the Toms living with each other. It's a bad idea. It shouldn't happen. The way that he says... You have a soda gun? Dude, yes. <laughs> what is a soda gun? Was out of this world. I don't know what that is. I was going to ask you that. Is that, are, are they talking about the soda stream? Are they talking about an actual gun? No, because he says I'm two things. It it's a soda gun and something else. And beer taps. Oh, it's like when you go to a bar and they fill up your soda like with their thumb on the thing. Oh, that actually is pretty sick. No, that actually that, that is, is sick. really cool. I take everything back. I might Tom. have to get me one of them. I'm so sorry. That's you really You can get one cool. for $400. Yeah, because he said and beer taps, so that makes sense. Yeah, that's sick. Okay. Then we're at the Face Gym with James and Allie. I've seen this ads for this place. And I've been like... I want to go here. Then I look into it. And I'm like, this sounds like a waste of money. The, when I was looking it up, I thought it was going to be like, you just do this for like an hour. <laughs> yeah, like you're you literally. You know, like you're just moving your face around. No, it'd be sick if you had like little weights that you had to like rest on your shoes. <laughs> and you had to like, <laughs> like little dumbbells. I just am convinced that like these fads are hitting up Vanderpump. Be like, will you just come here and have a conversation? Because they always like, remember when Stassi and Tom Schwartz, which is the weirdest duo to do this, went and she got her vagina bedazzled. Oh, none of this. Yes. They just go and do these like random little things to like. And then the scene after that is like a quick scene with Ariana at her gym. Craig, the hot assistant, comes in. I'm loving him on my TV screen. I'm beginning to think the only scenes... Wait, 
I'm oh, dying. Sorry. I'm just not realizing that's the hot guy that you said from the bar. You think he's yeah. hot? I, I, think, I think he's cute, but I think he's trying too hard now. I think he's. I think he's Tom Sandoval coded now. He was hot. I just but, put it together. I forgot about the story. No, yeah, about that's the, bar. the guy that I I met at the bar <laughs> that I was like obsessed with because I thought he looked like Joe Jonas, and now he's less Joe Jonas, more Tom Sandoval. Maybe it was the glass. I don't know. No, he the just, glasses weren't it. Like also another thing. You do not need to wear yellow tinted sunglasses I was say, inside. They tinted? Inside, yeah. that, that, you don't have to do that. But you know who who would do that? Sandoval. That's too much, Craig. Craig, you Craig. don't need that already, Craig. Like you're already good looking. You're already covered in tattoos. Like you have defining like features. And let me see that, Craig. I I want to. I believe her. She has great taste, but I can't see it through those damn lenses. Yeah, I don't like those. those what sunglasses. a travesty! I am beginning to think that Ariana is just like fucking over dealing with all the bullshit of like filming with these people and having to be around Sandoval that she's like I'm done with these motherfuckers if you want to do a scene with me catch me at my home I'll be FaceTiming Dan I know like they have to mic Craig for him to just come in and be like hey, hey yo, yo, do yeah the gym in the next like time? they just needed like another body <laughs> just anyone because <laughs> Ann's not there anymore we've lost Dan <laughs> um I know you said this was like a really good episode. And I do think it does get better. But so far, I was like, what the fuck are we doing here? So what we've been talking about so far is not the good part. What we're getting at next is Sir Into the James Party. I was party. like, it feels like a watered down soup. It's just like, let's kind of uh, really stretching for scenes of like, here's a little bit of Ariana saying not much. Okay, fair. I agree with you. I think now we're getting into some good stuff, though. That's Hop into it. Because I missed the Sir scenes. I feel like we're taking it back to the old school. We're seeing- Oh, well, because, yeah, we have the hurricane come back. Oh, Jax. Well, first we saw Guillermo as well looking like a zaddy. Guillermo was looking good. God bless him. Yeah. My note, my first note here is that Jax has absolutely slandered Lisa, and I am shocked that she's allowed him back on her show and it just further proves that they're throwing Hail Marys this season because after Scandival like what is there am I just a Tom fool it feels like go on because the way that she talked about it was like she's really good at acting no like I oh, believe Lisa is a I believe actress. her when she says like why did this happen I didn't know about it but she is the producer of the show she knows about it and she knows like she probably told James to do it but she seems so Wait, sincere. What are you talking about? Oh, about Jax. Oh, she knew Jax was coming because she said you know Guillermo why the fuck did you let this happen? Oh, because he she slandered knew. me she or whatever. Knew. And so now they have to like have this whole fake scene of where she's in disdain for him coming. Well, back. because they have to do that because okay here's what happened producers we're like okay so we can milk Scandaval for like the first couple of episodes of this season right like we we're got using that. Craig we're desperate we right need right some right, help. right we could we can we can milk that but then what's left because Ariana isn't going to want to film with Tom they weren't sure who was going to want to film with Tom so when they have nothing left to do when the storyline of this uh, of this problematic man being Sandoval is kind of done with what do they need to go do find another problematic man and they went through their call log and they looked and they said hmm who can we call <gasps> boop, 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 boop. Jax well you they available? did the same for Brittany she's not a problematic female that's why no, I think but Brittany, more Brittany, to the madness. no Brittany didn't come in and stir up shit though Brittany came in for a conversation they called up Jax to create more storylines. I genuinely think Jax had come in to just grab a pumpkini and he would cause a chaotic scene. I yeah. don't know what the point was there. I guess well, it's more to your point. I'm like, yeah, they needed someone problematic. Well, if you defer back to my viral video of Jax going on a rampage at Jax's Studio City. Scripted. In one of Scripted. his. In one of his. Um, <laughs> Actually, fun fact, I just got a DM from someone at Entertainment uh, Tonight, and they were like, hey, we did an interview with Lisa Vanderpump, like, asking her about this video. Oh, my God. Can we use your video and, like, credit yes. you? And I was like, yeah. You'll get some followers. So Lisa, Lisa saw it. Jack says in the video, like, I'm on it next week. Like, watch it. It was all fucking scripted. So I guess he's referring to this, which, oh, but I shit. think that he does not realize the difference between scripted and produced. Like, I'm sure they went in there and were like, Jax, we need you to talk to Lisa. We need you to say this to Katie. We need you to say this to the girls, which I guess that could be interpreted as scripted. But like at this point, I genuinely think Jax 
and Kristen Dowdy are the best players in their game. Like, I think they know it's a game and they know what to do to ham it up. But I also think they're just genuinely, and you have to have this je ne sais quoi, <laughs> genuinely a disaster for them to go into these situations and make them interesting. Yeah. So I think it's a mix of both. Yeah. It's like a perfect storm. It's per- truly a it's perfect beautiful. storm. beautiful. There's two parts that I thought was funny that's really not like story driving, but when Jax goes up to the, the girls and he sits there and he's like, well, hello. It gave me the same vibes of here's Johnny. It was, it was eerie and amazing. And then Ariana says that Sandoval, if Sandoval and Schwartz live together, it would be a Mojo Dojo Casa house. Sandoval's house is going to be the ultimate mojo dojo casa house. Like that was such a perfect comparison. It was perfect comparison. I was also like, oh, she's seeming really chill about this. But I'm like, oh, she knows this is never gonna happen. No, she knows. She knows there's no fucking, the numbers don't number. But it was nice to see her and Schwartz just have like a cool conversation. Yeah, with each other. yeah. I, I don't think she should ever be fucking cool with Sandoval again. And I wouldn't blame her for never being friends with Schwartz again. But I'm also rooting for her to be cool with Schwartz again. Just yeah. Because I don't know. It was nice to see. I felt like this was Schwartz's episode. Like, he had a great scene with Katie. Yeah. He had a great scene with, his with, with Ariana. Like, yeah. he's starting. Because he is, in his own way, I mean, he's a lazy fuck. But in his own <laughs> way, he is trying to kind of build up his relationships again. Granted, yeah. he does it in the way of, like, hi, Ariana. I, like, no, you don't want to, like, talk to me. But whatever. It's like, but at least he's not, like blaming her for shit like Sandoval is like he has been tail between his legs yeah. waiting for her to kind of come back to him he's doing it the right way asking her if she would be okay with that I think she kind of knew it was for a story that line. must be producers because I, I, I don't think he would think it would be like <laughs> I don't think he think that would be a good idea to ask her like why and I don't think she would actually say it's right okay. why would he even ask her although yeah. if I were Ariana I would be like yeah move in with him that's just a horrible look it makes you guys look even worse yeah moving in together at 41 years old but I think I feel like what she did was even better just being like if it wants to be a Mojo Dojo Casa house right do it there's actually an online theory that so Raquel was in talks of coming back on to Vanderpump Mm -hmm. and it wasn't like official that she wasn't going to come back to Vanderpump I think until like maybe like midway through the season so the online theory is that it was just confirmed that she definitely wasn't coming back and she was like done with like the talks of it because a lot of people online think that Ariana seemed a lot more relaxed this episode yeah. and chill and it was like, like she was on Xanax and like she would like kind of like her old self yeah. which is probably on Xanax <laughs> but and and I don't know if that's true but it would make sense like she didn't seem so uptight yeah she was chill she, she was cooler being around chill. so may like I could I, that would be a relief for me yeah to know that at least one of the two people I hate aren't gonna be back yeah it's a small battle one it is a small battle one and then another thing, speaking of the internet, that the internet was kind of like up in arms about is when Lala made that joke where she was like, hold on, I got to call my husband real fast. And then Brock was like, Lala, you're calling me. Brock is hilarious. Brock is funny. Brock's like, really funny. But but the internet, they because they made it seem like Sheena was like, like looking like from oh. afar. The internet thinks that was like a weird thing. I think it was funny. Brock, Lala's been very open about how Brock has kind of been like the male figure yeah. in her life and has done a lot for Ocean. Let's, Bravo, let's stop pinning women against each other. Mm-hmm. I'm no fucking need. over it. We're over that. Let, shit. like, like, let's not make the Lala Brock thing a thing because it's not a fucking thing. I don't want that to become a storyline. I really a don't. Thing. That's, that's the crowd getting out of hand. Yeah. I just think it's absolutely fucking insane that James is inviting Tom over. Like, I know it has to happen for the show. Yeah. But even for it to happen for the show, for him to still <laughs> just say, like, uh, do you want to come at, I'm having, like, some people over. Like, what? The last time we saw them, he was saying, this is a joke to me. I'm not opening for your band. See you later. You're never going to grow up. Dude, the wishy-washiness, it's so, it's inconsistent. And I know they have to do it for the show. That's why you and I have both said, like, none of them would be friends with each other 
each other, I you just know. Wouldn't be happening. They wouldn't be friends with Sandoval, let alone each other, if they weren't on a TV show. But it is so hard to like flip flop back and forth of like James hates Sandoval, but now he likes Sandoval. Yeah. Sheena wants to be friends with Sandoval, but now she's screaming at him. Lala's hanging out with Sandoval, but now she fucking hates him. It's like every it's so inconsistent. It is so inconsistent, which to me just makes it seem faker and faker each episode. I'm so done with it like at least ariana and katie have the consistency of like this is who i fuck with this is who i don't yeah but at least for sheena we see okay she's in a bad place with tom then if she gets in good place we see that happen if she gets in bad place we see why they got the bad place james it's like okay we just saw them get to a very bad place we don't know why now he's in a good place and then it'll be in a good place and then all of a sudden like he's back to his venomous right angst and it's just confusing right it is confusing oh i have a really important question oh yeah, yeah. are you at the next james's house yes yeah to james's house this is a really important question for you which spice girl are you kate oh so i actually have a group of friends and we dubbed ourselves the spice girls that's a great question yeah i got ginger i think ginger is the one they don't really know what else to give you interesting but she is debatably the star what i th- why i think i got ginger is because at the time in my friend group i had like red streaks in my hair well that's if you had red hair you were automatically put in that corner but if i had to identify with one probably crazy or that's that's not her name scary <laughs> <What? It's> cra- <laughs> crazy spice. I meant scary. I meant scary. <laughs> it's like the Barbie movie when there was like ugly Barbie. Like who is crazy yeah. spice? Yeah. Crazy spice does exist. We just haven't seen her. She's been locked up. <laughs> She's been locked up. She hasn't been introduced to society yet. She's still in the 90s. Okay. I think I would be scary spice. But scary spice. She should be called crazy spice because she's not scary. She's just like crazy. She was crazy. But... I don't know. No one. Uh, this was fucked up, but no one wanted to be Scary Spice. No one wants to be Scary Spice. Yeah. Now I would go back and be like, you know what? That's a good Spice. She had the be. best outfits. She had the best outfits. She had an attitude. So who would you be? Um, I think I'm like, what is it? A, a baby sun and a sporty rising. That is so fucked up because I was going to say you're a mix between sporty and baby. Those were, I wanted to be a baby so so opposite. No, because so, the cool girl was always baby spice. Like everyone yes. when we were younger, like fought, when I was a kid, I was always sporty spice. When we had parties, I was baby spice. No, except I was really Ugh. sporty as a kid. I was so, so jealous. So everyone tried to make me sporty. And I was like, no, no, I'm a, I'm a cute pop baby. Mm. I'm a baby spice. Everyone wants to be baby. I was yeah. okay. I'm okay with being ginger now. I don't know what she does. Why didn't but. we all want to be posh? Because she, in my humble opinion, in our minds, she dressed the most boring. Because she just wore all black. Like, it's not fun to be posh spice. I am posh now. You know, I take everything back. I mean, I'm not posh I don't posh see you now. as a posh. I I want to be posh now. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously. Obviously, everyone wants I to mean, be posh. I mean, like, yeah. I don't, I, don't, I don't deem myself that stylish by any means. I do love black. You do love black. Her style is rocking. Her yeah. body is also wonderland. Uh, you know what? It's not even a competition. I Just give me one. I don't care. Yeah. Spice Girls, if you want to sponsor this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Jax walks into James's party ranting that he's like ready to get crazy. My wife's at home and I have a babysitter. If Brittany's at home and you have a babysitter, why isn't Brittany at the party? Like we've already seen her once this episode. Like, ah. I wonder if they were fighting. That he day hates her. He and hates her. And it was like, I'm not gonna go, Jax, if you're acting like this. I just don't think Brittany was invited. They can't. They can only have one valley person in a scene at a time. It's a budget thing. Yeah. <laughs> We talk a lot about James's separation from hippie. And at first, look, I'm insensitive. I've been told I, I'm too tough love. I know I'm insensitive. And at first I was like, it's a fucking dog. Like, this is getting out of hand. But then at the same time, I do think there's probably like something deeper into it. Yeah. Maybe he's afraid of losing him again. Someone online said like, if you get someone like random to take care of the dog and hippie does bite, there is an, a world where maybe like... The That's dog a could very get taken good from him. point because yeah. hippie is not a reformed hippie. No. I mean, like they said that he was better, but <laughs> once a biter, kind of always a biter. <laughs> There's yeah. not much they can do. If he nips someone, that will be a problem. I, I know people that have had their dogs taken away and euthanized because they bit people. Yeah, I get it. And he doesn't want to fuck up again as a dog dad. I felt for that. But it's so funny because if I saw James's reasoning 
for not wanting to leave Hippie alone, just written on paper without like specifics of who he was talking about. I would think it was Sheena talking about not wanting to leave Summer. Yeah. <laughs> like it's the same exact thing. Like, like I, I don't want to leave her. I have OCD. I, I don't trust yeah. anybody else yeah. with her. Yeah, 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 totally. Well, that's why Lala got so pissed off that she was like, yeah, like I don't know what it's like to leave my child with someone. Right. Yeah, crazy buffoon. She right. really likes the word buffoon this season. Right. Katie and Jax get in a fight and it got me a little horny. That's, whoa, I didn't know that word was coming. No, let's, it got. <laughs> let's, let's break this down. It got me a little horny because I was like, oh yeah, finally it's like, Old school Vanderpump rules, real drama, because th- what the, this because, shit goes back. Because we have the best player in the motherfucking game. It's like watching LeBron. Yeah, it is LeBron's like... LeBron's back in the stadium. Carolyn, that's a sick comparison. Don't tell Jax that we compared him to one of the best basketball players of all time. Happen. Maybe the best. Oh my God, but we can't have that happen. It was like, there was just so much history between Jax and Katie, like... It took them two seconds to just explode with yep. each other. It was it was awesome. The best reality scenes are when cameras are not prepared for it to happen. When there's shitty angles or something. Yep. They, this wasn't part of the yep. script. We're going off script. Oh, it's beautiful. It was best so parts. beautiful. Mm-hmm. And then I think really the only other big thing to talk about is the fight between Sheena and Tom. Oh, God. God. So yeah, Sheena and Tom get in a heated conversation. And this is a hot take. And I think I have said this before. But and I will stand by this, even though I am not a Sheena apologizer anymore. Anymore. She has a right to be upset over what happened with Scandaval. It did affect her too. No, it didn't affect her to the extent that it affected Ariana or Sandoval or Raquel, whatever. But like it did. It affected all of them. Yeah. Sheena was the closest to... It affected me. It affected us. <laughs> it affected Look at us. what we're doing right now. We wouldn't be sitting here right now talking it about this. It was consequential. But like, it, Sheena was the closest person to Raquel other than Tom and Ariana. Like, yeah. it, it was a big deal to her. I am kind of tired of them like being like, okay, Sheena. Like, like she's allowed to be mad. Her best friends lied to everyone now granted she is making it seem like they only lied to her okay not to sound abrupt but our video (laughs) just cut out because we filmed this on my iphone and i guess because of coachella i totally ran out of storage and we didn't record like the last 10 minutes of what we said and carolyn and i were riffing it was amazing like it was probably our best of girls unscripted ever and it's all gone. And it's gone. It doesn't exist. Actually, no. Well, we have the audio. We have the audio, but we don't have the video. So we'll see what happens. So we're gonna we're gonna backtrack. We'll uh, start again. So let's retalk. It won't re-talk. be as good. Well, but let's talk. Well, well, we don't know. It could be even better. Kate. It could be better. Let's talk about it like it's the first time. Yeah. The best part of the episode, which is the heated conversation between Sheena and Sandoval. It was so heated. Um, This is a hot take. And I know that I have talked about this before. But I do think Sheena has a right to be upset over what happened with Scandaval. Yes, obviously it affected Ariana more than it affected everyone. But like Scandaval did affect other people in the friend group. Yeah, it wasn't just an isolated event. So I don't think it's so like out of control that she like has emotions about it. Do I think she's maybe being... A little much? Sure. She just needs someone to validate her. She just needs someone. She needs Brock to say, honey, I know it was hard. Yeah. I bet he does. I think he does. Because you saw him stand up for her in the argument. Well, yeah. So that takes us to in the argument. Not said. In the (laughs) argument, Tom, which Tom, you know what? It was a fine argument. I was enjoying watching the argument. Tom had some things to say. Sheena had some things to say. I was like, all right, like, I'm kind of fucking with this. Like, go off. And then right when Tom, he was making some points, he decided to ruin everything by saying, you know what, Sheena? You've been the other woman before, too. Ripcord. Literally. It was a ripcord moment. Again, he's gone. He just flung back. Fool us 
twice thrice i'm done and it's a comparison that is not a good comparison it's not a good comparison our frontal lobes weren't fully formed yeah she okay sandoval loves to make these comparisons of shitty things that people have done when they were like 20 years old yeah so here he's like well sheena you did the same thing you were the other woman which it isn't the same thing at all and yes she was like 20 years old and then a couple episodes ago he said the same exact thing to james kennedy like well you know you did the same thing with Kristen dude like you dated her like like right after me and like we were roommates it's like James was what 23 years old when that happened like it's so fucking different stop trying to make these comparisons that are not comparisons at all they're not this fight is crazy when he said the other woman I audibly gasped Kyle's job was to the <laughs> floor and then I vomited. Like it was, it was so crazy for him to say that. Well, and I actually did take to the internet because I was curious about what people thought about this fight. Because at first I was like, oh, how dare he? Like yes. that's so fucked up. But there's a lot of people on the internet that are saying things like good for fucking him. She needs to be put in her place. Here's, here's what she does need to stop doing. She does need to drop the act that she did not know she was the other woman. There is no, I was being lied to for a year. Like there is no, she has Google. Out of everyone you know who's using Google, Sheena Shea of who she's fucking. Sorry, that was really aggressive. No, you're right. But also at the same time, it doesn't matter. It still doesn't matter because she wasn't best friends with fucking Brandy. Yeah, and she was 23. Yeah. It, It just makes no sense. Tom is a fully lobed developed man yeah it's a scientific term and then big daddy brock swoops in and really just like stands up for his woman if there is one thing like say what you want about sheena say what you want about brock he does stick up for her and it was sexy he is like the only man on this show that sticks up for his partner the way that someone should stick up for their partner when they're in an argument with friends and he puts his hand on his shoulder and he's like hey bro she's 20 blah 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 whatever it's like good fucking stand up for her Mm, and he was logical it was so hot also at the same time though like so sheena gets yelled at by tom right sheena is so upset about this whole thing she's so sad brock is upset this is the man you guys have all been defending the past four episodes this is the same man that you guys have been befriending or trying to be friends Mm -hmm. with and you see the way that he is talking to you He's not sorry. He doesn't fucking care. He doesn't care about you. He doesn't care about any of this. He, it, this is, how many times does he need to show his true colors before you guys see the rainbow? And like, I can't even remember if I've said this this episode because I feel like we say it every episode five times. But yeah, you think you're going somewhere with him and then you're not. He's being an asshole. And it's not going to change. He's always going to hate Sheena. <laughs> I don't think he hates Sheena. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if he does. I'm unsure how he feels about her. But even in the, like, we see the previews of the the finale scene of Sheena still hanging on asking, well, what do I mean to you? Why doesn't matter what he means to you? I think he's showed you guys time and time I again. that you speak louder. You all mean nothing. It's not that he hates you. Yeah. It's that he loves himself so much that he will never... Look, I do think in Tom's mind, he is a good friend. Mm -hmm. I would rely on Tom to pick me up from the airport. Right. I would not rely on Tom. I would rely on Tom to bring the Molly. Exactly. (laughs) You know? I would not rely on Tom to keep my deepest and darkest secret. I would not rely on him to be trustworthy. No, I would not leave him alone with my dog. His motives would be questioned, but he would pick you up from the airport, which is a big thing for someone to pick you up from the airport in LA. Like, that's a big thing, regardless of his motives, one might say. Right. He would do something like that, but he doesn't actually care about you. When When it's in terms of me versus you it's always going to be me when it comes to tom like he could have done the worst thing in the world Mm -hmm. but he is always going to deflect on something bad that you did yeah he doesn't care it doesn't matter this is exhibit a sheena it doesn't matter if you're his best fucking friend he went to the thing that you are most insecure about the thing that you are so like you don't want out there in the world he took that and used it against you 
in front of everyone and you still want to have some sort of friendship with him and you currently do by the way she currently does have a friendship with him after he's treated her that way and you know after this they're gonna have some scene where they make up but tom he's not gonna just change his mind about what he's clearly thought about sheena for the past 15 years like he just let the bomb drop that like hey i've always thought of you this way our entire friendship and they're still going to have a conversation and act like nothing happened and moved on. It's going to be frustrating and Shana's going to get sad again. It's honestly exhausting. It is. It's fucking exhausting to watch them all flip flop like one episode they're friends with them, one episode they're yelling at him. Like, doesn't make sense. I do think that kind of brings me to the question of the week. Was Tom Sandoval's comparison to what he did versus what Sheena did a good comparison? That's it. You worded it well. Okay, great. Is that a good? Is it a good? Or comparison? is it valid? Like, like is what he said that like should like because I know like I said the internet is torn of like is it okay he went there? Yeah, is it, like that's fucked up that he said that, but also did she deserve that? Yeah. I also saw a tweet that said, "Why is it okay for Sheena and Lala to yell at Sandoval, but when Ariana does it, she's unhealthy and needs to move on?" Mic drop. And this is also just hap. I mean, it was what six months since Scandal yeah. broke. Yeah, like, like five, filming yeah. just occurred. So give the girl a break. Like if Ariana raises her voice at the man who fucking cheated on her under her own roof with her friend. She needs to move on. But Sheena and Lala can yell so hard About that their the restraining order. That their fucking veins are popping out their neck and their acrylic nails are this goddamn close to his face, and that's okay. Yeah. It is a double standard. It's wild. Every Pl- week I feel like I'm more team Ariana. I know. She, well, she's just the only normal one. I'm actually like really heated after I was really heated after I watched that scene. I'm really heated after I talked about it. Yeah. So I could really use a bit of a wind down. With maybe some ASMR. Oh, my God. You I, looked I at thought, me like I was crazy. Well, you said, I thought you said wine down. I thought you were going to pull out wine. That and would I was be like, so man, sick. you are crazy today. No. This is Coachella, Kate. So we all transform during Coachella. Kate Jello. Okay. okay. Let's do so I'll, I'll cue it up. So the ASMR today is, so it's the scene where Katie and Tom are at the diner and Tom is texting Tori asking her like saying hey or when they want to hang out next or whatever (laughs) and you can see the previous texts before that he had texted her you know in the past and we wrote it down and Carolyn is going to ASMR that text you because you guys it is if a 40 year old man texted you this (laughs) you may think differently of him all right so everybody sit back relax if you're still here it's good to have you if you left we'll see you next time this is this week's ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Tori. <laughs> Sheet. It's next to impossible to make plans while we are filming. Let's let the stars bring us back for number two. Happy Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Sheet. 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 <laughs> I don't know. What would you do? Let's let the stars bring us back for number two. And I I hope we see that number two. So I know you guys will never know the bits that got lost in the sauce, but I need you all to know it it was was really good. We ended strong. And I did actually talk about it and I'll talk about it again. My mom actually texted me. And she was like, I fell off of a ladder. It was actually kind of scary. Like, oh my God, no way. Yeah, well, we'll tell you what we actually said. And okay, well, let's just reenact it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> oh my gosh, Carolyn, that actually reminds me. Oh my God, what? My mom fell off of a ladder. Oh my God. No, she, no I know it was crazy. She fell from like pretty- Is she okay? Well, no. So she fell from pretty high up and she really hurt her arm. But she was like, thank God it wasn't like my hip or my head or anything. But the reason I'm saying this is because she fell because she got distracted because she was listening to Girls Unscripted. Oh my God, it's our fault. I feel so badly. Now say what you actually fucking said. I took it to a dark direction. Okay, I think I said, I think I said, see, that's like my worst fucking nightmare that I wake up to a text and it says, hey, Carolyn, uh, everyone you know is in love is dead. Yeah, and then I was like, I never fucking said my, I was, was like, worried my mom was dead. She was like, Jesus, Carolyn. Thanks for dark. putting that in my mind. You had to have been there. I promise it was hilarious. It was funny yet dark. It was funny yet dark. But she's okay. She just hurt her arm. She's a strong woman. Oh, I thought you were talking about me. 
Also, I, you're, I am you're a, not okay. I'm not okay. I'm not a strong. You woman. are not okay. <laughs> and, and on the and bit a on the weaker side. Woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We can admit it. Oh, so let's just reiterate. You are going to be. What? Oh, I you were saying it. You were going to be at. The, were you just about to tell me to say that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we are in we are sync. In same sync, car. Same car. Same thoughts. Same thoughts. Carolyn is going to be at the improv this Monday, which is April 29th. April 29th, 9 30. I think John Campanelli's headlining. John Campanelli? Yeah, so it's going to be a fucking good show. Dude. And if you come up to me afterwards and say the words Pizza Hut, I'm giving you a bomb ass great surprise. A great surprise. And it's not limited to just one Pizza Hut. And then you get to see Carolyn in person. And then you get to see me in person. Pretty cool. And maybe I won't be wearing all black. I probably will be. No, you'll probably. If I can it's make a guess, you'd be wearing outfit. the same exact yeah. outfit. <laughs> Guys, don't worry. She did not wear this to Coachella. No, I didn't. If I it was, was a little very... colder, maybe. Yeah, no. If there were Coachella, New York, I would have done Yeah, that. Coachella, New York, the New York version. All right, as always, we're going to do a Valley episode. Our Valley episode's going to be a little shorter than this one. We're just going to go over the broad strokes. And that Valley episode was was fucking spicy so stay tuned motherfuckers there you have it follow us on instagram at girls unscripted pod and as always thank you guys so much for listening sorry we took a week off last week but thanks for coming back we're back and better than ever hell we yeah love you. hell yeah we love you see you on the valley next time bye, bye.